Okay, so in this video, I want to give an argument for God's existence from music. I was very skeptical that a good argument like this could be made, but I'm doing research for a book that comes out in fall of 2021. I'm going to share more details about that in February. So if it's February or 20 of 2021 or after that you're watching this, I'll have put that in the video description if you're interested. But anyway, doing research and I'm just very much impressed that an, a good argument actually can be made. I like to make it as an abductive argument, which simply means an inference to the best explanation. So this is not yielding a certain conclusion like a deductive argument would. And I give this as not a comprehensive argument. I give this as just looking at two alternatives, a theistic worldview and a naturalistic worldview. And I, and I basically want to make the argument that Theism gives you a better explanatory framework for the experience of music. And first, I just want to say people experience transcendence through music. It's the first half of this video. Then we, we will say, what's the best explanation of that fact? But before we get started, just take a moment and just listen to this. So basically, the argument starts like this, by just a simple observation. Human beings experience transcendence in the context of listening to music. And most of us can relate to that at a personal level, whether it's classical music or being at a U2 concert or something like that. Most of us have had moments where we've felt not only pleasure because of music, but a sense of transcendence. And Charles Taylor spends a lot of time talking about how in a secular context, the arts play a different role than they have in pre-modern cultures because all throughout human history, music has been embedded in some kind of metaphysical context in which that association with transcendence makes sense. So he talks about listening to Mozart's Requiem, for example, and how there's religious themes in this piece of art. So this applies to music, but also all the arts. And he's basically saying there's a kind of a kind of loss and impoverishment in a secular context for many people listening to this song. I think the challenge he puts is something like this. Here's the challenge for the unbeliever to find a non-theistic register in which to respond to the arts without impoverishment. One example of this would be Julian Barnes. He's an agnostic. Uh, he, in his memoir, he has a a lot to say about missing God. And he talks about the sense of nostalgia for God. And, and the context in which he talks about that the most is the arts. So he talks about music, he talks about even sculptures and paintings that have a religious connotation to them, and the sense of loss and nostalgia in enjoying those pieces of art. And his explanation for that is, religion gave life a sense of context and therefore seriousness. Was it true? No. Then why miss it? Because it was a supreme fiction, and it is normal to feel bereft on closing a great novel. For some people, music points to God himself. Albert Einstein famously said, although probably speaking in a metaphorical sense of God, nonetheless, it's interesting that he would think to say this. He's listening to a violin prodigy play. Afterwards, he says, now I know that there is a God in heaven. Or there's a story in Walter Isaacson's biography of Steve Jobs where Yo-Yo uh, -Yo Ma is at Jobs' house playing his beautiful cello. And afterwards, Jobs says, you playing is the best argument I've ever heard for the existence of God. And I've actually observed in debates, I watch a lot of debates between theists and, and atheists or agnostics, and uh, it's interesting the way sometimes the aesthetic argument, uh, which would be the family of arguments of which the argument for God from music is one example, sometimes merit more respect than the more strictly logical arguments from the skeptic. Now, people might say, okay, so what? People think of God during music, big deal. But it just raises the question at this point. It's just a question. 
What is the best explanation for this sense of transcendence? Where does that come from? When you think about that, listen to this piece of music. And if you have the willingness to do so and you're alone, slow down, really listen to it. You know, don't, for me, I'm always tempted to look at my phone while I'm doing something. Just really close your eyes if it helps you. Listen to this and think about the person in your life that you love the most and the way you feel about them. Think about that while you listen to this. So the question that we're asking in this video is what's the best way to understand this kind of transcendent power that music has? On a naturalistic worldview, you're basically looking at evolutionary psychology. This is the explanation for everything about us. And it's a reductive explanation, meaning, you know, on a, on a theistic account, evolution can play a role. Some theists believe in greater, other, lesser amounts of evolution in terms of the explanatory extent of those mechanisms. But on a naturalistic worldview, it's all evolution, all the way down. So what that means is basically you're, you're looking at these different theories that all amount to what Stephen Jay Gould called an evolutionary spandrel, which simply means a byproduct or unintentional consequence of the process. So on a view like this, two things follow. Number one, music is arbitrary. We could have evolved such that we wouldn't find music beautiful. It would just be white noise to us. Secondly, music is illusory. It's deceiving us in some way. It, we find it beautiful, we experience transcendence through some kind of accident as it's triggering things that evolved for some other reason because they had survival value. Now, most of us, when we consider that, especially in the context of actually experiencing music, feel a sense of loss and impoverishment. We can relate to Julian Barnes' feeling of nostalgia for God. So now consider the other alternative. On a theistic view, music is not a deception or an illusion. Music is a little clue into what ultimate reality is really like. Music, along with every other form of beauty in this world, is a faint reflection of what exists beyond space and time. And many Christians have spoken of music as a kind of language. Peter Kreeft called music the most ancient language. And Christians have often depicted music as specifically as the kind of language that wrote the world. So um, in The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien, he describes these angel-like creatures creating the world, and the way they do it is through harmony. Uh, so it's music, but it's specifically musical harmony. And at one point it says, the music and the echo of the music went out into the void and it was not void. So somehow music is actually doing the creating here. It's a fascinating way to think about music. Uh, C.S. Lewis, same thing. In The Magician's Nephew, the character Aslan is singing the world into being. And as the stars are created, he talks about how the stars are joining in to the singing. And, th th you know, these are just works of fiction, but they go back to a, a, a classical Christian instinct, which is... Uh, rooted in the book of Job, where it talks about the stars singing for joy at God's creation. So think about the, the contrast between these two. On one worldview, music is an accident. On the other, it's a language. On one, music is a sort of accidental offshoot from nature. In the other, music is what produces nature. I like to put this in terms of a metaphor. So think of uh, 
uh, naturalistic worldview, music is like an opiate or a painkiller to someone who's dying. You're, you're soon to die and music is pleasant because it's a distraction from what reality is really like. Uh, on a theistic worldview, music is like a window to an imprisoned person. It's a little clue of what might be out there. And so I like to say, think of someone stuffed in a dark dungeon and there's a little window and light is streaming through. What if the, the nostalgic longing, the feeling of transcendence that is associated with music is like that window? It's not a distraction. It's not an accident. It's a little clue of what is ultimately out there. I find that more plausible and I find it so much more beautiful and compelling. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so we can stay in touch as more videos come out.